Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing my Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 with bandolier. This cutie right here. You can also fit a book in your tablet. I bought this bag in the summer of 2019 and even till today it is still my favorite go-to bag. So I thought it'd be helpful if I give you an in-depth review of this bag. Today I will go through specifications, pros and cons, wear and tear, and a bit of design history. Then I will also show you what fits in my bag and how it looks on me just to give you a reference point. On this channel, I enjoy sharing my styling journey when it comes to luxury reviews, fashion tips, and outfit inspirations. If this is something that you also enjoy, I would love for you to join my channel so we can share these fun experiences together. Without further ado, let's get started. The Louis Vuitton Speedy was designed in 1930 as a smaller interpretation of the very popular Keep All to reflect the travel evolution of the era. The original size was Speedy 30, known as the Express. In the 1960s, Audrey Hepburn asked Louis Vuitton to produce a smaller day bag for her. Louis Vuitton since then introduced a smaller version of the Speedy, Speedy 25. Nowadays, the Speedy is also available in sizes 20, 35, 40, and even in the miniature version Nano Speedy. Due to popularity, the Speedy Bandolier was introduced in 2011 so the bag could be worn on the shoulder and crossbody. The Speedy also comes in various materials and prints such as monogram, demi ribbon, demi azur, and emprunt leather. This is my Speedy Bandolier 25 in monogram. Bandolier just means that it comes with shoulder straps. 25 is a measurement in length, so 25 centimeters, and height is 19 centimeters, and width is 15 centimeters. Because mine is in the monogram version, so the top handles are in this rolled untreated leather, same with the shoulder straps. The main body of the bag is mainly just one piece of canvas, so you can see the front side of the bag has the LV logo in the right orientation, but if you turn it around, the LV is upside down. There are no external pockets and no feet at the bottom. On the inside, you've got this beautiful milk chocolate color textile lining. Um, there is a small zipper compartment. On the other side, you will see a small D-ring right here, which is very convenient. I typically just attach my key pouch there. The bag came fully folded down inside this little dust bag. And then there's the giant LV box. The Speedy also came with a set of lock and keys. So the lock is right here, let me show you. Mine is in the bandolier version. So it comes with two sections of leather straps, fully adjustable. On to pros and cons. I've summarized five pros and three cons. One of the reasons why I love this bag so much is because it's a perfect medium sized bag with great capacity. Given that it sort of has a rounded duffel bag shape, it carries more than enough for my daily essentials. Another pro of this bag is the versatility. The bandolier version comes with fully adjustable and detachable straps, so that makes it very petite friendly. You can also carry in many different ways. For example, you can hold it as a top handle bag, you can put it on your shoulder or if you adjust the strap length a bit longer you can wear it cross body which allows you to be hands-free another factor to consider is a comfort level because this bag is mainly made of canvas it is extremely lightweight even though it carries a lot this vachetta or some people call it the vachetta leather is extremely comfortable Another pro of this bag is the durability. I have to agree that Louis Vuitton canvas is very well made and virtually indestructible. Last but not least, I thoroughly enjoy the aesthetic and the design of the Louis Vuitton Speedy. I think the Speedy is a classic and iconic silhouette of Louis Vuitton that will never go out of style. I know some people call this Speedy a bit basic, but I like to think of it as classic. Moving on to the cons, I previously talked about the capacity as being a major pro, but 
that could be a problem too. Because the bag can carry so much, it could literally turn into a black hole, which could give me a panic moment if I have to retrieve my phone or my wallet in a hurry. This can be easily resolved if you use a bag organizer. Another con with the Speedy is the opening. As you can see, the opening of the bag is a lot smaller than the bottom of the bag. So if you need to take out or put in any large items, you need to sort of go at it at an angle, which could be a bit of a hassle. Another con with the Speedy is the hardware. I think the metal is where it shows the most wear and tear, including hairline scratches and some discoloration. Some people also mention sagging with the Speedy. However, I don't think it's a major problem for me. I think it's natural when it comes to wear and tear. Now I will show you what fits in my bag. As you can see, my Speedy 25 right now is completely empty, so it does look a bit saggy here. First of all, I will add my key pouch here. I will actually attach to the D-ring right here just so it's easier for me to access. And it goes in like this. My card holder in the little zipper compartment. Even though it's quite small, I can actually put in my bag holder, my lip balm, and my lipstick. And you can zip it up like that. And then inside, I will also throw in my phone, which I'm using for filming right now, a catch-all, my power bank, and my sunglasses, my masks. Probably I would also bring this extra section of leather strap just so I can convert it into a crossbody bag if I want. So yeah, this is typically what I carry every single day. As you can see, once it's filled up, it does look more rounded and more shapely. And we're only at about 30% capacity right now. There's still plenty of room. I want to show you, you can also fit in a 500 millimeter water bottle in here. So it just has to go in at an angle, but it does fit. You can also fit a book in here, a tablet. If you need a full-size wallet, it is also possible. Looks like we still have a bit more room. And look, it is still comfortably zipping up. In terms of wear and tear, I've had this bag for over three years now, and I've worn it consistently pretty much every single weekend. I would say overall, the quality is very good. Overall, in terms of the canvas, I have not noticed any signs of cracking or wrinkling, so I would say the canvas is in pristine condition. I know some people have experienced some quality issues with Louis Vuitton canvas lately, so feel free to drop a comment below and share your stories with the community. Now, in terms of the overall bag shape, I think it is a common problem for a Speedy to sag a little. So you can see sagging here and then also a little bit at the bottom. Not as noticeable for Speedy 25, I think, because it's a small size. In terms of the Vachetta or Vachetta untreated leather, it has held up better than expected, I would say. The top handles sort of just patinaed over time into this beautiful honey caramel color. There are no major watermarks or stains on it, and over time, everything sort of just blended together beautifully. The only thing I notice is on the front here, there are two tiny little black marks. I think it potentially came from rubbing against the canvas or the metal itself. The straps, I do notice little signs of wrinkling here and there, but I think it's natural. On the side here, I think this is where I've got a little bit more water marks and a few spots here and there. That doesn't bother me very much. So overall, I would say if you are a monogram lover, don't be discouraged because of the Vachetta leather. I would say I'm generally a pretty careful person, but I do not baby this bag at all. Just avoid taking it out during a heavy snowy day or a heavy downpour. Onto the metal. So on this BD, you can see there's mixed metal here. The zippers are the matte finish, no tarnish and no uh, major discoloration. There are tiny chips on this one particular zipper, but not very noticeable. On the day rings here, these are also matte finish. Here, I do see more signs of scratches and discoloration, I think possibly coming from the rubbing. The clasp and the buckle here are both shiny and they're doing surprisingly well. So not a lot of tarnish, a little bit of hairline scratches, barely noticeable. The lock, 
on the other hand, is a whole different story. The lock is extremely tarnished. Same with the keys, completely turned green brownish. The piping, I think, is doing generally pretty well. There's no major chipping whatsoever. Great condition. And the glazing as well is doing pretty well. Overall, I would rate this bag as pretty good quality. In terms of my final verdict, would I recommend the Louis Vuitton Speedy B25? Yes, absolutely, absolutely yes. yes. This is definitely one of my favorite go-to bags for daily uses, so I might be a little bit biased here. In terms of the overall quality, I think this bag is extremely durable and easy to use. It's got an iconic design and great versatility that can be easily incorporated into different occasions. I know that Louis Vuitton has had numerous price increases lately, but I still think that the Speedy is at a relatively friendly price point compared to the other designer bags from major fashion houses, especially considering the legacy and the history of this bag. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll try my best to answer. If you own a Speedy, please tell me about your experience. For example, what size and pattern did you go with and do you still like it today? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!